Welcome to the Waymaker Podcast Studio. I am pleased to be joined today by two incredible actors, Mr. Jacob Lattimore, Mr. Curtis Cook. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the summit. How are you guys doing today? Oh, doing great. Thank you for having us. Thank really you for having well. us. Thank you. No, it is my pleasure. Let's talk about why you guys are here and what you're getting, what the feel is that you get from this summit that's going on so far. Um, I mean, just, just arriving in, just like literally walking in through the door, I just feel a lot of love and energy uh, amongst, amongst men, men who want to grow and, 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 and be better in their lives and, and uh, kind of just own up to what may be lacking in their lifestyle in order to in order to be great, be the, be them best selves. You know, so I think I think that's the energy I, I feel out the gate. I, I mean, I, I really I just got here, so but I'm 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 soaking it all in and seeing the love and seeing everybody uh you know give everybody give give each other their flowers. That's a that's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, and um, uh, piggybacking on what Jacob just said, it's also beautiful beautiful to feel the community that's mm -hmm. here seeing people, this is a part of our, 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 our community that doesn't get polarized or shown enough. Mm -hmm. We see a, a lot of young, black, beautiful men um, who are positively thinking, who are thinking on how to grow their communities and make them stronger, mm -hmm. and to be invited into a space like that is amazing. And you feel that love, like he said, once you walk in, you feel that hug from them. And so, um, yeah, I am really happy to be here. Well, this is an incredible place, and I wish more people would get the sense of what you've just described, because this is what it is. This is, this is community unparalleled of black men right here that Lewis has put together uh, with this Waymaker Summit. I only gave your names as we started out, but Curtis, why don't you just give us a bit more about who you are, what you're doing, where you've been, and what connects you two gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Well, you said you only got 15 minutes, man. If I start telling you, we're going to have to do this. <laughs> no, um, Curtis Cook, I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm a five, um, I have a beautiful wife, Angelique Edwards. Um, oldest son is 32. Um, the youngest children are their twins. They're 19. They just left for college, both of them. Thank right. you, Jesus. So now we have an empty house. <laughs> we have an empty house, so now I get to walk around the house. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, I've been acting for a very, very long time. I was very fortunate to be the first African American to get a full ride at Mount View Theater School in London, England. Mm -hmm. um, when I got there, I was um, thrown into a pool of incredible wow. artistry. Um, my teachers were the likes of Dame Judy Dench, Michael Caine. Um, and the list goes on and on. I say this now with such pleasure and reverence, but when I saw them, all I saw was old white English mm, people, not yeah. even knowing who they were. Um, the lessons that they taught me, though, that I take with me every day is something that um, you, you can't buy. Um, and it was uh, also lessons about who and what I was because I was the only black there and a black American. And I was from the Midwest in an in a, in a urban city. And so I was learning so much at once. Um, the fact that I came out the way that I did is, is a testament to my parents, mm -hmm. Alice and Clifton Cook, um, that got me here. Uh, I've done a lot of things. I've been on a lot of TV shows. I've been on a lot of movies. But the most important thing is that uh, I care about my community, and I care about um, um, the, the representation of um, black men. Yes, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I push that forward every time I take the project. Curtis, we love you back for that, too. Yes, uh, Jacob, talk about yourself and what brought you into the work that you're doing. Tell us the work you're doing and what brought you into that. Yeah, well, I, I started out really young um, doing music as a, as a kid. My, my family is just musicians. My, my cousin, Kenny Lattimore, and my dad and my uncles. Heard of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my dad and my uncles, they were uh, started out doing gospel music, then got to, uh, then ventured off into R&B. Randy Jackson had signed them at uh, MCA Records like early 2000s. And I was just in a household full of just musicians and singing and entertainment. So uh, I just soaked it all in at like really like six years old. Um, hopping on stage with my dad and my uncles and they bringing me out and introducing me and then eventually molding me to creating my own music at nine years old. And I uh, uh, started out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, not too far from the shot. And um, then I, I, I just started growing in my own, in my own, you know, my own city, just performing at different schools and, and just really uh, kind of just being bold with it and having really a, a great support system from my mother, from my father, my grandparents, and then uh, moved to Atlanta when I was about 12 years old. And uh, that's when I started to sort of take acting a little bit more serious, just started to see different um, Atlanta. What Atlanta showed me was that there were other, there were other young young men pursuing something in entertainment, and uh, it kind of gave me uh, a just 
more motivation to, you know, broaden my horizon. Because uh, I was strictly stuck on music. Like, I'm like, I'm only doing music, you know. Um, but I got an agent in Atlanta, started auditioning, uh, just started being more open to uh, other ways. And my film career has just, you know, t taken off in ways I, I, I could never imagine. So, uh, you know, to just do all these cool projects leading up to this point. And um, also just right now, I think I'm just reflecting on what's happened since I was a kid, you know, like being a young man now and, 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 and noticing my responsibility of, of what I, not only what I'm doing in, in entertainment, but what I have to say. And uh, I think this is, um, this is a beautiful thing for me to just be here and, and just sort of reflect on my own life and sort of maybe give some insight onto what could be around the bend for the next act, young actor or next young businessman and, and, um, and just constantly growing. So. It's uh, it's been a it's been a long journey, but I'm still I'm still young, though, so it's uh, it's, it's still the beginning. Yeah, Curtis, it's funny how he calls it a long journey. <laughs> how, how long could it possibly have been? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because, <laughs> you're both involved in this incredible series called The Shy, which we love that you're involved in and love it because you're right here in Chicago. Uh, don't want to get too much into that, but really want to talk about um, you know every overnight sensation takes a long time to get to. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Curtis, why don't you take this one first? Talk about what some of the challenges are and the challenges that are that you've had coming to all the roles that you've gotten to and getting to where you are in this business. Wow, man. Uh, there's been a lot of challenges. Um, one of the biggest ones that just kind of popped in my head when you asked that question was roughly around in the early 90s, right? Um, there was a time where, like I said, I was a classically trained actor. I came to New York City. I came from London to New York. That's where I started my career. And like Jacob was saying, he only wanted to do music. All I ever wanted to do was Broadway. Hmm. I didn't want to do television or film. Um, um, I was fortunate enough to do that. Um, but then when I did decide that I wanted to transfer over into television and film and movies, um, what they were looking for at the time were realistic people. So they were going out for rappers. They were going out for all of these kind of individuals who weren't necessarily actors at the first point. And I remember being very frustrated about that because I'm like, wait a minute, I can do that. I can do what they're asking to be done, but nobody was looking for them. So what I'm saying is that sometimes you have to break the door down even when you feel that they're not looking for you. I knew that I could play certain roles and I can do certain things, so what we had to begin to do, me and a group of friends, we started to create like a theater company. Um, it wasn't like a theater company, it was a theater company. We started to put pieces together and off off Broadway plays and whatnot and whatnot, mm -hmm. and people started to come. And then from that, um, they began to see what we had and who we were. Um, I'm not going to say that anybody from that broke out and became huge successes or whatever else, but I will say that it was the action of taking control of your own destiny based on what you knew you could do as opposed to being told what you could do mm -hmm. that changed my trajectory, I think. Um, Broadway's still a, uh, a love for me. Um, I was fortunate enough to do three. I'm gonna get out shows. there one time. Come on now, hit it, hit it, hit it. <laughs> um, <and> yeah. <laughs> I wish you all could see this on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it's uh, it, it uh, the thing that I love about stage is it makes you have to move, use every morsel of your being. Mm -hmm. You can't. I mean, they're all different. There's no. There's not one that's better mm -hmm. or. I just think that they're different. So from the stage, though, being able to watch somebody from their toes all the way up to the tip of their head and watch all of that act, I think that informs the character in a different way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in film and television, all we have is from our shoulders and up, and we have to make sure that it's small enough and but reflects the energy and the feeling that we're trying to you know, direct whatever in that scene is. So, so, so they're the same skills but different, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think being from the theater, sometimes that informs your television and film acting differently. So... Challenges were letting them know that I could do television and film as well because sometimes once you start in a certain place, they're like, you know what, you're a, tele you're a stage actor. We don't want you. You can't do this. But it's like, I can. And therefore, I showed them, and, and I've been very fortunate since. I mean, you can ask Martin Scorsese. You can ask mm -hmm. um, uh, Steven Spielberg. You can <laughs> ask um, Sidney Pollack, God rest his <laughs> soul. You can't really ask them because they are people that I've worked with, and I'm, I, they speak highly of me, and, of course, I speak very highly of them. Well, we get to see what you've done on film, so we can judge it ourselves, and we judge you well. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been good. Uh, Jacob, you come in with a big name and high expectations just because of that. Talk about what some of the challenges have been for you um, getting to the places that you've gotten to. Uh, I think the 
think the challenges have been probably just social media. Uh, I think uh, being a being an actor, I think what 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 hasn't really changed is being mystique. You know, being uh, out the way, low key. But a musician has to be, you know, outside, uh, touching the fans constantly, club dates. You know, it's a it's a different lifestyle that I transferred from from music to to film where. Film was like stay isolated for three to four months at a time, and, and and really become this this character, and then trying to balance out, you know, art. I haven't dropped an album in a while. I still got some music fans that that, that want that want some content, but you know, it's like man, I, I can't let my cast down. I can't let the the people around me down because the 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 project that we're we're sitting on right now is is, is so important, you know. So it's I think that's the challenge of just being that multi-hyphenated and, and wanting to do so many things at once is really that time management that's been, uh, that's always a little bit difficult. So I, I take it one year at a time. I may say, hey, you know, this year I'm really going to focus on acting. I'm not going to be on social media as much. I'm not going to, you know, drop any much music. I'm not going to stay in the studio that long. I, I'm going to take this time to be in the studio and take this time to, uh, you know, study my script and watch a ton of movies and, and just, you know, live the actor lifestyle, truly, you know, and really, um, you know, just sort of, and, and, and hiding, you know, I think um, uh, the, a film actor lifestyle is, from what I've seen up close, and it's a, it's a, um, it's, it's, it's a balance, it's a balance, and especially being young, and you know, you want to be outside, you pop it, you know what I'm saying, but it's a, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you you one more time about being young. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. About being young. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a balance of, of, um, of lifestyle. I think lifestyle difference is, is a bit different. This is important to ask for b of both of you, so um, Jacob, get ready, because it's coming to you next, but Curtis, this summit, the theme of this summit is working your way out of an uncomfortable mm -hmm. position to growth. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about a time when you found yourself in an, in, a, in an uncomfortable situation and how you grew out of that? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of an easy question for me because it's, I'm pretty sure it's known out there. It's been publicized for a minute, for a while. I was, um, at one point, um, my, my, my ex-wife left and um, left me with three children, mm -hmm. Curtis, Isis, and Kimani. And during that time, it wasn't, it was pretty rough. And um, we got evicted from our house. Mm -hmm. So I was a single dad with three children. And I actually had a, a, a boxer, a white boxer. Her name was Nairobi at the time as well. Um, and I needed to find a new place to live. I needed to find, um, um, fortunately enough for me, it was in the summertime, so school, they weren't in school right then. Um, talking about an uncomfortable situation. Uh, I think that was probably one of the most uncomfortable situations. How did you get out of it, Curtis? Uh, I um, prayed, of course. Um, I had a lot of support um, from my parents. Um, they weren't in the city that I was in, and the support that they gave to me was um, by words of encouragement and um, telling me not to give up. Um, it was God, man. It was God and, and, and the determination not to stay in the same place. Um, I do know that once we did come on the other side of that, uh, I promised them that they would never be in that situation again, ever. And from that point on is when I started to buy property all around the country. Um, you know, so if ever we were kicked out of a house, we had another house to go into because we owned it outright. Um, and that's something that's very fortunate and I do not take lightly. Um, and I say that's from work. Um, um, being kicked out was not um, only the fault of the person or the people who kicked me out, it was, it was also my fault. So I needed to look at what I did wrong in those things so that I didn't repeat those mistakes again. Um, it's about managing money and how to manage your money and where to put your money and how to spend your money so that um, mm -hmm. When times get rough, there is something there for you. Um, we made it through. Curtis, Isis, and Kimani are doing very, very well. Um, I met a beautiful woman. We have Isa, uh, we have Harlem and Jay, the twins, and now I have three grandchildren as well—three, three, three wow. boys—and um, I'm only 
I'm 22 years old, so imagine <laughs> that. So I'm gonna be young and outside. Yeah, he young. You know, I'm trying to be young and outside. And yeah, when you're young and outside, outside, you gotta. Probably. You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get no. Somehow I missed you in the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> but you were clearly, clearly Clear, you were clearly there. going there backwards. But not, but we made it, man. And, and it's praise God that we did. And that was a rough time. And I can say that because I got out of that. You, anyone else who is listening to this and having a hard time, you as well can get out of that situation. That seems unbearable and, and, and no way to get out. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Jacob Lattimore, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would say um, my, my, first, my first uncomfortable sort of um, feeling that came over me was actually like leaving the record company at, um, I think I was about 16 years old. So that's when like, you know, I'm, I'm I'm like pursuing music, I wanna do music, and then, you know, when it doesn't work out with a record company that you spent years trying to figure things out with, you, you, you're out on your own. Like, and I think it was that moment of like, oh, I need to really take my career, you know, in my own hands and really uh, figure out a way to capitalize on the fans I do have from the help I had all, over these past years, right? And then dropping music independently leaning more into film, which was something that I didn't really want to do at first, but I, I once, you leave, once you leave a record company, it's like, okay, f I have to really fully give myself to, to film and really uh, explore that. C coming to LA for the first time, shout out to my brother, uh, Dexter Darden. Um, he was in a Maze Runner with me. and He was like, bro, come out to LA for a year. You can stay with me, I guess you got your own room and bathroom. You know, we, we, we broke some bread once a month, you know, so, and then I literally stayed in LA and just Ubered around. I was on my own for the first time. Like my mom and my father and everybody was sheltering me, but this was my first time really being out in LA, meeting people, shaking hands, building my own relationships with producers and writers and other actors and other just, you know, um, people in LA who were actually just going through the same thing, you know? And um, it just felt, it felt, Good. It felt uncomfortable at first, but then you start to realize, like, oh man, this is this is a part of the process. You know, um, being uncomfortable is a part of the growth. You know, if you don't, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. Hmm. You know, so and then I would say the second time is right now. You know, we we the industry just shut off on us. Mm -hmm. You know, but like he was saying, with real estate, it's been something I've been you know kind of diving into the past couple years, and now I get to really fully pivot into real estate investing. I'm on the phone about it every day now. You know, I wasn't on the phone about it earlier this year, you know, but now it's like an everyday thing of like, all right, I need to go look at some properties. You know, I need to go do this and do that. And, and how am I investing my money right now? Why am I going on this trip? Yeah. You know, why am I going to this restaurant? You know, do I, do I, I, need, I really need to learn how to cook and sit down <laughs> and stop Postmate. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's certain things in life that, that really, um, that really, that are God of like push you into that corner, like I told you, you know. So you really, this, and this is the time to, to really dive into those uncomfortable places. Well, Jacob Lattimore, Curtis Cook, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us here in the uh, podcast for the Waymaker Summit. Uh, I think in the industry, when you guys get back to work, the right thing to say is break a leg. <laughs> uh, so do that. Ah, right, right, right. Appreciate you both being here. Right. Thank you, and, thank um, you, man. Thank you. Curtis, you've done well for a Sigma. We Come appreciate on. it. I tell you what, that's what Sigmas do exactly. well. <laughs> appreciate you both. Thanks I'm for like, joining Yeah, us. yeah. I want to live